Stan Jibalisco here, proprietor and operator of amateur radio station W1GV, Whiskey One Good Vibrations, <clears throat> with a little presentation about a simple dipole antenna for 40 and 15 meters, a two-band dipole. Now, when I was a novice radio amateur back in 1966, I started out on 40 meters with a very simple antenna called a dipole. Now, I have to give credit for the idea for this antenna to Bill W0GLE, now a silent key, who was a <clears throat> clued me into the fact that I couldn't just stick a wire in the end of my into my transmitter antenna outlet there and think that it was going to work. What I had to do, at the very least, was construct what he called an open dipole antenna. So, I followed his instructions and cut a dipole like this, 33 feet on each side, fed with coaxial cable down to my venerable old radio, a Johnson Viking Adventurer transmitter. And I just put the, screwed that coaxial PL259 connector right into the back of that transmitter. I continued to use my Halicrafters SX130 receiver with a, well, a random wire, basically, for receiving. So I had a separate receiving antenna, and so the transmitter naturally created a signal that kind of overwhelmed the receiver, but uh, I was able to actually calibrate that receiver using the crystal that I started out with back then in those days, novices, had to use crystal control. You limited to 75 watts plate power input. Your license only lasted for one year and you couldn't renew it. You either had to upgrade or end your ham radio career. Well, I started out, of course, as a novice, WN0OKV. Back then, the phonetics went Oscar King Victor. Now they go Ocean Kilo Victor, but I never used phone, so it didn't matter. The N was for the novice. Later, I changed to WA0OKV until 1977 when I became W1GV as a uh, ham radio operator of W1AW at the American Radio Relay League headquarters in Newington, Connecticut. Enough history from me. This is the antenna, a very simple 40 meter dipole for transmitting. And it worked all right. It was only up about 10 or 12 feet, though. I didn't know at that time that really you have to get an antenna up a quarter of a wavelength or more before it starts to really perform. And that would have been at least 33, 35 feet above the ground. But. Um, but I learned that later, and I also didn't know that you ideally you should run your feed line, your coax or your ladder line or whatever. You should run that feed line away from the antenna at a right angle. When you have a dipole antenna like this, whatever kind of feed line you use, you should run it away from the antenna at a 90 degree angle for at least a quarter of a wavelength and preferably a half a wavelength or more. In addition to that, if you use coax as your feed line, as I did, ideally you should put a ballon right here. That is a balanced to unbalanced transformer. A one-to-one -one ballon would work perfectly well here. So the whole antenna should be up at least a quarter of a wavelength above the surface. 
that would have been an, a more ideal antenna. But in any case, it was 33 feet long on each of these legs of the antenna. And my original frequency was, as I said in a previous video, 7.185 megahertz, which was in the 40 meter novice band at that time. I also had a crystal that would operate on 7.035 megahertz. But I couldn't use that on 40 meters because it was outside of the novice band. But the third harmonic of that was 21.105 megahertz. And I could put that, I learned, in the Johnson Viking Adventurer transmitter, tune it for 15 meters instead of 40 meters, and the third harmonic of that crystal would produce a transmitted signal perfectly good on 15 meters at 21.105 megahertz. But there's a fundamental difference here in the way this antenna functioned. On 40 meters, the RF current as a function of the position along the line looks like that. Minimum current at the ends, maximum current at the feed point, producing a pure, non-reactive, resistive load of about 73 or 75 ohms under ideal conditions. So you get a standing wave ratio of about 1.4 to 1. Well, that's all well and good. That's assuming the antenna is cut as a half wavelength dipole for 7.185 megahertz or also about 7.035. The third harmonic, you get another current loop and you always want to have a current loop. That means a current maximum at the feed point of an antenna that you feed with 50 ohm coax. Otherwise, you'll have a very high standing wave ratio on there. But on 15 meters, what happens is you get a current distribution that goes something like this. Now, in this case, the wave here doesn't indicate the actual, it indicates the intensity of the current, of the radio frequency alternating current, and the whether it goes up or down indicates the phase. So you have an opposite phase current loop here in the middle, and these here, this is a one and one half wavelength, or three halves of a wavelength antenna. Half a wavelength here, half a wavelength there, half a wavelength there on 21.105 megahertz. And it worked! The 40 meter antenna and the 40 meter crystal both worked on 15 meters and it was a nifty arrangement. And you can still do that kind of thing today. You can still make antennas, dipole antennas, work on their third harmonic. Even a vertical antenna will do it, although the radiation pattern gets a little weird. Instead of one quarter of a wave, you can have three quarters of a wave, and maybe I'll talk about that in some other video. But the thing worked, and it was better on 15, actually, because 10 feet was closer to a quarter of a wavelength above the ground on 15 meters. So that's the scoop from... W1GV, back then, no, it was WN0OKV in Rochester, Minnesota. And my Elmer, again, his call, his name was Bill, W0GLE. I still remember him to this day. Stan Gibalisco, signing off for now, 73 and so long.